Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Brit Brings It Home. Moms, this video is for you if you could use a little help coming up with some good, healthy ideas for your kids' lunches. I know it can be a pain making your kids' lunches day after day and trying to think of new, fun ideas to put in their lunches and trying to think of what kind of foods should even go in their lunches. What are good, healthy foods that your kids should even be eating for lunch that will help to fuel their body, help them to grow big and strong, and give them energy for the rest of the day without being too hyper, and help them to concentrate on their schoolwork for the rest of the day. And on top of all that, you want to choose foods that your kids actually like and that they will enjoy eating. So today I'm sharing some tips and ideas for simple and healthy kid lunches that they'll actually like. Okay, so I've taught my kids how to do some cooking, how to do some things in the kitchen with the help of the Kids Cook Real Food course, which I will link down below. I'm not sponsored by them, but I absolutely love this course and my boys really enjoyed it too. They got a lot out of it. But what it is, is it's a course for kids pretty much any age, starting with maybe three up till they're a teenager. And it teaches them so many great cooking skills that they will need when they go off and live on their own someday. So. I have boys, two boys, but I do not want them to think that they will just get married and rely on their wife to cook all their meals for them. <laughs> we are in the 21st century and that is not realistic. My husband does a really great job with helping with making supper, making breakfast, and I couldn't do all that I do without him for sure. So I want my kids to be capable of cooking meals and doing their part around the home when they are older and off in their own home or married. So thankfully, with the help of that course, my boys are able to do a lot of things in the kitchen. They're able to use knives safely and measure out ingredients and stir, flip pancakes, all kinds of things. Now, my youngest son, Jace, is only five years old and I don't let him cut just anything. He only cuts like soft foods, like bananas. So when he starts to develop better fine motor skills, I will teach him how to cut harder kind of foods like carrots and potatoes. And I definitely don't let them do anything by themselves. Like I'm right there with them, monitoring them because teaching kids to cook is just like teaching them to read or anything else. We use a process called I do, we do, you do. And so that's where they watch me do something first. I show them how to do the skill or we watch it on the videos in the course and then we do it together. So like I will like hold my hand over their hand and we'll do it together and then they will do it and I will watch them and see how they do it and give them verbal guidance if they need help with something. And then later, once they have perfected the skills and I can trust them to do things safely, then they will be able to use their cooking skills on their own. So the great thing about the course is that you can tailor the lessons to the kids' individual abilities and ages. So we watched the videos together, both of my boys, but then my older boy was able to do some things that my younger boy wasn't able to do yet. But I continue to practice some of the skills with him. Even though we've done the course, we still definitely practice the skills so that he can get better and better and be able to do some of the things that he wasn't able to do originally. So anyways, since they do know how to do a lot of skills in the kitchen, they help with making their lunch. Now I've given my kids some guidelines so that they know what kind of foods they need to have in their lunch to make it a healthy and balanced meal. And they choose the foods that they want and they make it and I'm right there with them to assist as needed. And definitely with my younger one, assist him more. Okay, so here are the guidelines I have for my kids' lunches. Number one, they have to have a fruit and or a veggie. Sometimes they have both, sometimes it's just one or the other. Number two, they need to have some kind of a protein and I'll give some examples of these in just a minute. <laughs> Number three, they need to have some kind of a healthy fat. So we're getting in all those macronutrients. Number four, they can have a grain product, but they don't have to. And number five, they can have a dairy product, but they don't have to, that's an option. So the three macronutrients that provide us with energy and fuel our body are carbohydrates, 
fats, and protein. And I wanna make sure that their lunch has all of those macronutrients, but in healthy forms. And that they're also getting micronutrients, which are just as important. They are all those great vitamins and minerals that help our body to perform all the functions that it does. So we have fruits and vegetables in every meal. Those are carbohydrates, but they are healthy carbohydrates. They are complex carbs that our body takes longer to break down so it doesn't give us a blood sugar spike right away. And fruits and veggies have fiber in them, which is so important. A lot of Americans are not getting enough fiber in their diet because they're getting the majority of their carbs from other sources that are simple carbs and don't have that fiber in them. And then also in those fruits and veggies, we're getting a lot of micronutrients. And then we also make sure that besides the fruits and veggies, we also have some protein and some healthy fat to fuel them until dinner time. So when you are making your kids lunches, focus on using real whole foods instead of packaged foods, which I know there are some healthy packaged foods. The health food world is growing and growing and there are more and more packaged foods that are becoming healthier, but still it's always best to just go with real whole food. Food that looks like the same as it was when the farmer picked it off the plant or off the tree. Now, we don't really have junk food in our house other than we do have some candy that the boys have every now and then as a treat, but we really don't have junk food in our house. So that is not a problem, thank goodness. That's not an option for them to even choose. If you have junk food in the house, like cookies, crackers, candy, cupcakes, snack cakes, fruit snacks, all these other packaged snacks. If those foods are in the house 9.9 .9 times out of 10, your kids are probably gonna choose those things if given the option. But if it's not even in the house, it's not a temptation. It's like out of sight, out of mind. And once you stop buying those things, it won't take long for kids to like catch on to that and start taking on this new way of eating with real whole foods. Kids are very resilient and I think it's a whole lot easier for kids than it is for adults to start a new way of eating and start eating a cleaner, healthier diet. Also, make sure that you're not giving your kids foods with tons of sugar. I used to be a full-time elementary teacher before I quit my job to stay home with my boys, but I remember all too well in my teaching days, after lunch, most of the kids would be super hyper for a little while and then have a crash and be super tired and it would take all I could do to get them to do any kind of work and listen and pay attention in class. That right there is called blood sugar imbalance. I sat there with my kids during lunch and watched what they ate and most of the kids did eat junk food like cookies, crackers, cereal, pudding, these foods with lots of sugar in them or foods with simple carbs, those packaged crackers and chips and things which our body breaks down to sugar quickly in our body and it spikes our blood sugar. Up. So all those foods are definitely tasty. They taste good. They taste good on purpose, but they are not doing your kids any favor for their short term or for their long term health. So once they have those foods, they're probably gonna have a little crash in the afternoon and have trouble focusing and doing their best in their schoolwork. And then eating junk food day after day after day will definitely have an effect in their life later on in adulthood. It could lead to weight gain, diabetes, and other disease. Now, I'm not trying to scare you by any means. I just wanna get that groundwork laid. That's so important to make sure that when you are choosing foods for your kids' lunches, that you are choosing foods that are real, whole, natural foods. So let me give you some examples from each of those categories for things that I put in my kids' lunch or that they choose to put in their own lunch. So first of all, fruit. I always have fruit on hand. You can probably see our big bowl of fruit here. I always have apples, usually bananas. We are out of bananas right now. We usually have oranges, grapes, berries, all kinds of fruits. My little one's favorite fruit is watermelon. So once watermelon comes in season, I will definitely be getting those. I'll slice up the apples or they'll just eat a whole apple. Sometimes they eat it by themselves. Sometimes I give them some peanut butter or some yogurt to dip their fruit in. So keep it simple. It doesn't have to be fruit in a cup with a bunch of juice in it. An actual piece of fruit will do just fine. 
especially if you cut it into little pieces and give them some kind of a little dip for it. It just makes it so much more fun. Okay, number two is veggie. Some of my kids' favorite veggies are pickles, which is a veggie, it's a cucumber with usually vinegar and things. If you get pickles, try to just get clean ones that don't have food coloring in them or other nasty ingredients. And then carrot sticks, cucumber slices, and ants on a log are some of their favorites. And to make ants on a log, it's just a piece of celery with some peanut butter on it and some raisins, that's it. Number three, protein. Probably their favorite protein source is pepperonis, which is not the most healthy. So sometimes we have pepperonis in the house and they have that for their protein. Sometimes we have deli meat and I get organic deli meat without the antibiotics and the added hormones. I do the majority of my shopping at Harris Teeter and the Simple Truth Organic brand is a great one. And then I always have canned meat on hand, canned tuna and salmon and sardines and things like that. So same thing, I always try to get it clean. I get like wild caught salmon, Wild Planet is a great brand, and Wild Crop Sardines, which they actually like. Sometimes we think our kids aren't gonna like something, but if we just give them a chance and we just let them try it without even saying anything to make them think it's gonna be bad, just say like, hey, I got some sardines, you wanna try some? And then you eat them too and let them try them and see if they like them. My kids like them, they taste kinda like tuna. Another protein that I have on hand sometimes is chicken salad. I make my own homemade chicken salad Salad, which I'll put the recipe to that down below. I have it on my blog. And then sometimes I'll make grilled chicken and we'll slice up the grilled chicken and they'll have some of those slices. And then sometimes we have hard boiled eggs for our protein source. Okay, and then for a healthy fat, my boys love peanut butter. Peanut butter is probably their favorite source of fat ever. And so I make my own homemade peanut butter. It's super simple. Sometimes the healthy fat is just nuts by themselves. Sometimes it is yogurt, and I get whole milk, organic, plain yogurt, usually sometimes vanilla, but I usually get plain and just add in my own little bit of vanilla and honey if we want it sweetened a little bit. Okay, and then for a grain, I make my own sourdough bread, and so usually that will be our grain. Sometimes I get tortilla chips and I get clean, organic, non-GMO tortilla chips, and then sometimes it's a tortilla wrap, and again, I always try to get organic, non-GMO corn product. And then for dairy, it's just cheese. <laughs> and again, with dairy, I always, always, always try to get organic dairy and I want it to be whole milk so they're not taking out the fat. That is a great source of fats as long as it's organic and doesn't have the added hormones and antibiotics. So when it comes time to actually make our lunch, we usually keep it pretty simple. A lot of times we have leftovers, as long as we have enough leftovers from dinner the night before, we'll just reheat those and have that for lunch. If not, here are some things that we make for our healthy lunches. So a lot of times we make smoothies and when we make a smoothie, we make enough for all of us because I'm not gonna get out all the things to make a smoothie for one kid and then get out a bunch of other things to make something else for another kid. Usually whatever we make for lunch, we kind of stick to the same thing for all of us. But smoothies are not anything that we need to fight over. If one kid wants a smoothie, the other one will. They love smoothies. Okay, so to make our smoothies, we start with a base of usually water, sometimes almond milk or coconut water, and our greens, either spinach or kale, or sometimes they use a powder green called Amazing Greens. And when I first started making my boys smoothies years ago, and they were watching me make this smoothie, I was worried. I was like, oh no, they're watching me put spinach into this smoothie, now they're not gonna eat it. Well, they never once said that they didn't wanna drink it after I made a smoothie with greens in it. And in fact, just the other day, I was making a smoothie and my youngest son, Jace, he's like, I'll get the greens. And he went and got the greens powder. When I asked them what kind of greens they want in their smoothie, they never say none. Usually it is kale that they want. So I love adding greens to their smoothie because it's a source of fiber and a boost of micronutrients. And you really can't even tell that they're there. We use a lot of fruit in our smoothie too. So the smoothie does not end up being green. 
and you can't really taste it over the fruit. So I blend the liquid and the greens together first. I find that that really helps the greens to blend more easily and it becomes like a green water. And then I add the rest of the fruit to that. So usually I use frozen berries, sometimes frozen peaches or mango or pineapple or bananas, sometimes apples, whatever fruit we have on hand. Sometimes I add avocado to make it more creamy especially if I don't have bananas to make it creamy. Sometimes I add some Greek yogurt, and then I always make sure it has some kind of a healthy fat in it. So usually I add flax seeds and chia seeds. Sometimes I add coconut oil or almonds or peanut butter, usually a combination of some of those different healthy fats. And most of those also have protein in them too. And if I don't have any frozen fruit, if I just use fresh fruit, then I add some ice to it to make it frozen and then I just blend it all up again on high speed until it is done. And if it's not sweet enough, sometimes when you use a lot of berries, they're not as sweet as like bananas and apples. And so I might add a little bit of honey also. And if it's not liquidy enough, it's not pouring well into the glass, then I will add some more water and blend it up again. So my boys love smoothies. It fills them up and it is super nutritious. Another thing we make sometimes is a quesadilla. My oldest son Jackson absolutely loves making quesadillas for lunch. We use either coconut wraps if we have some or cassava wraps, which this is what Jackson's using today. Or if we don't have those and we have corn tortillas, we'll use corn tortillas. I just make sure that they are made from organic and non-GMO corn. So just some kind of a gluten-free tortilla. And then we just shred the cheese, add it on top, add anything else we wanna add. Like if we have some grilled chicken strips, we'll put that on top. And then we just let it cook for a few minutes. Once the cheese starts to melt a little bit, then we just fold it over and let it continue to cook flip it over, let it get nice and golden brown on both sides, and then it's done. And we shred our own cheese, just because when you buy shredded cheese or even sliced cheese at the grocery store, a lot of times they put additives in there to help prevent it from sticking and clumping together. And a lot of times, one of those additives is gluten. So just to avoid that, and to make it as healthy as we can and as real food as we can, we shred our own cheese and it just ends up being fresher that way anyways. We shred it when we use it. It takes all of 0.2 seconds to shred that cheese. Another great lunch idea is a classic. It is the classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Most kids love these and you can make them healthier just by using higher quality ingredients. So I make my own sourdough bread. I make a few loaves of it each week and we use that because in real traditional sourdough bread, the grain is fermented. That makes it a whole lot easier for the body to digest and it reduces the gluten in it majorly. So it doesn't cause as many problems that gluten containing foods can cause. If you do not make your own sourdough bread, you can always buy a gluten free bread like Udi's or a sprouted grain bread like Ezekiel. Sprouting and fermenting are both ways to, to make the grain more easily digestible and to reduce the anti-nutrients in those grains. Grains contain a lot of anti-nutrients and that's just like what it sounds like. Anti-nutrients prevent our body from being able to get all the good nutrients from that food. So we wanna reduce the anti-nutrients so we're able to get all the nutrition in that food. So I make my own sourdough bread and then I also make my own peanut butter and jam. So the peanut butter is so easy. All you do to make homemade peanut butter is just blend up peanuts. Literally, that is it. It's so simple. I use unsalted peanuts, dry roasted. I use two pounds of them. So those are those jars that they come in. They're each a pound, so I use two of those. And then you can add more to it if you want to, or you can just keep it as peanuts. I like to add MCT oil because it's like a liquid form of coconut oil and it just helps it to blend up more easily and be creamier, which we like creamy peanut butter here. And then I always add salt because the peanuts that I use are not salted because salted peanuts have other additives in them too. So I add my own salt and then sometimes I add other things. I get a little fancy with like organic vanilla extract or almond extract. Sometimes we add a little bit of maple syrup 
or honey to sweeten it a little bit with some natural sweetener. And for the jelly in the PB&J, I make my own strawberry jam. I made some last spring. I just made a ton of it and stuck it in the freezer. And so I just get a jar out from the freezer every time we run out of a jar. And now that it's spring, it is almost time to start picking some strawberries again and make some more strawberry jam. But it was so simple. All I did was heat up the strawberries with some gelatin from grass-fed cows and a little bit of sugar. I think I did organic cane sugar. I'm not sure. It's been a while. Either that or maple syrup or honey. One of those three. But if you buy jam, look for one that is preferably organic and low in sugar. So you want it to be organic to avoid the pesticides and the herbicides that they spray on the plants. So those are not getting into your food and into your body. And you want it to be low in sugar. I mean, jam is sweetened. There's no getting around that. It's sweet. It tastes sweet. It's sweet. It has some kind of sweetener in it, whether it's sugar or something else. Now, I would not suggest getting a sugar-free jelly or jam just because when it says sugar-free, it might be actual sugar-free, but it has something in there to give it sweetness. I've never had a jam that's not sweet at all. Look on the ingredients and see for yourself, but usually there's some kind of sweetener. And if it tastes sweet, if our tongue recognizes it as sweet, then our body does the same thing it would do with sugar. And other artificial sweeteners can do even more damage than sugar can do. So I would just stick with real sugar, like just pure cane sugar. Definitely avoid high fructose corn syrup and aspartame. So look at the ingredients, Check to make sure it has real sugar in it. And then don't just look at the ingredients, but also look at the nutrition label and see how much sugar is in a tablespoon. You don't wanna get a jam that has like 12 grams of sugar in one tablespoon. Try to find one that's lower, more like seven grams. Okay, so another thing we do for lunches around here is make bento boxes. Okay, I love these because they're so simple. It is just a box divided into different compartments and the kids get to choose what things they want to put in their different compartments that are in our categories. So they need to have a fruit and or a veggie. They need to have a protein. They need to have some kind of a healthy fat and then they can have some kind of a grain or dairy product. I mean, you can literally put anything in these compartments and the kids love it. It just makes it so fun for them. So when they choose to make a bento box, they choose a protein. Usually, like I said, if we have pepperonis, usually they're going to choose pepperonis or else they'll do like turkey slices or ham slices, grilled chicken breasts, whatever. And the protein will go here. And then they choose a fruit or veggie. So they might do like cucumber slices or strawberries or blueberries, whatever kind of fruit or vegetable they want. And then they need to have a healthy fat. So they might do like peanut butter to dip apple slices in, or they might do hummus to dip their cucumbers in, or they just might do some kind of a nut, some kind of a healthy fat. And then they can fill the other ones up. They might do a little bit of shredded cheese. They might do some beans. <laughs> My boys love beans. They might do some tortilla chips. So it's super simple and fun and my boys love these. All right, well that's it for my simple and healthy kids lunch ideas. Let me know in the comments which one sounded the best to you and something that you think your kids would love having for lunch. And let me know if you have any other healthy kids lunches that your kids like to eat. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe so that you can be a part of my community here and you can be notified when I come out with new videos just like this one. All right guys, from my home to yours, see you next time.